Thank you. Uh, if you tuned in tonight to see my guest David Attenborough, thinking that you were going to see uh, one of your favorite British actors, you're in for a surprise. Uh, having met him, however, it's a pleasant one, I can tell you. He is, in fact, the younger brother of Sir Richard Attenborough, the actor, and during eight years managing BBC television, he's also the man responsible for inventing the 13-part documentary series format, uh, for which you've got uh, Civilization, uh, which you've seen on PBS. Mr. Attenborough is also a, a zoologist and a geologist and maybe the best uh, training for a television executive. And before joining television management, he was the producer and host of a show called Zoo Quest for 10 years. And since he left program, director programming for the BBC, uh, he's written and appeared in the largest documentary ever produced by the BBC entitled, appropriately enough, Life on Earth, which uh, covers a lot of territory. As title suggests, it uh, traces 35 hundred million years, I'll stop while you picture that, uh, of life on this planet. And uh, that series will begin on PBS in January. He also has a book uh, about the uh, series with the same title, uh, just been released in this country. And so um, if you would welcome then the man who can tell us the difference between a pill bug and a penny sow, and who started his career as a specimen Caucasian, Mr. David Attenborough. Say, I've never read anything like the way people rave about you in print and uh, your, your television persona and so forth and so on. Uh, but what in hell is a specimen Caucasian? Uh, well, <laughs> it sounds sort of laboratory. -like. It was a sort of, it was an anthropological program uh, back in 1952 uh, when uh, BBC was only just starting television. Mm -hmm. And you really made up the programs as you went along. I mean, you made them up just before you printed the program guide and put them in. And there was a man who decided that he would do a program about uh, the basic of uh, basics of anthropology and the different racial types. And he came into the canteen one morning and he said, I need a specimen Caucasian type, he said. And he looked around, he said, you'll do. And I was a trainee at the time. I said, thank you very much. And I went up and that was my first appearance. <laughs> and all they needed was, a, was homo sapiens, that, uh, I know about Caucasian, sapiens, uh, but uh, they well, wanted homo my profile. Homo. <laughs> well, how, get me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, that's a, that, then that led to greater things, did it? Uh, you know. Well, it, it, it was the beginning of, uh, what, 25 years or so in television, yes. Mm -hmm. There was a time, wasn't there, when they tried to beg people to get into television, and the smart people said, no, listen, radio's where the money is in the future. Oh, that's true. I applied yes. for a job in, in, uh, in radio uh, in the BBC um, and got turned down immediately. Yeah. I didn't get an interview, and, and then they started ringing me up and saying, um, do you think you would consider television? We know that it's not intellectually so-so, but I mean, <laughs> it could, there could be something in it. Yeah. And uh, that's, I joined television never having seen it at all. Never uh, saw the little no, wiggly image. They, yeah. they said, you know, why, why do you want to go into television? And I said, well, I think it's a medium of the future uh -huh. and that sort of thing, and never <laughs> let on that I hadn't seen it. By the way, there are going to be gorillas on this program. Uh, for those of you who have said, get more gorillas on the show, <laughs> uh, they, they won't be here in the studio. I'm sorry to say, but I just saw backstage an incredible piece of, of tape with you and, and gorillas, which almost looks like it would have to be trick photography, but we'll, we'll get to that uh, shortly. Um, have any, has anyone ever told you that your teeth were too big? <laughs> I know, Wait a so minute, I've been saving that question got, for years, yeah. and I just wanted to ask somebody that. You've got marvelous research, Do you think clearly. I have the right person? I think you do, uh, because it was... <laughs> I then, after being a Caucasian oh. specimen, had to do an interview job, not as glorious as this, but uh, some interviewing job. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed a, a very thick uh, athlete who uh, wasn't very good meat for interviewing. He was uh, thick? Uh, up thick here, in the, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he um, the only piece of information as against his teeth, the only piece of information I had was that he did all his training in hobnail boots. And I said, uh, why do you do all your running in hobnail boots? And he said, because it's so nice when you take them off. 
<laughs> and that was as far as I could get with my interview. And I was never asked again. And I thought it was because of my lack of skill and penetration in interrogation, you see. But then when I eventually became an administrator of the BBC, I opened my file, which came my, across my desk by accident. Mm. And there it was. This man should not be used again. His teeth are too big. And that was me. That was why I was dropped. That is really so. <laughs> you, you've overcome this, so haven't you? I mean, Only so. slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop Bugs Bunny, and they certainly don't look too big to me. There are people in the business whose teeth are too big. Uh, I don't know anybody who could stretch that hobnail boot information into a 30-minute show. Is yeah. that what you were? What I your think chore that's was what they had in mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where I failed. Well, you could discuss each nail, and then. You know, so. <laughs> uh, perhaps I've kept people waiting for the gorillas, the gorilla fans waiting, and we're going to run out of time if I don't show that now. Uh, let's take a look at the gorilla film. Does it need any? pre-explanation or shall we just just show it let, let it roll okay I should say that the only reason that we were able to make that film which I find extraordinary because I didn't know that was going to happen I didn't know they were going to come and sit on me and the only reason I could was because of a very very remarkable American zoologist called Diane Fossey who had worked with that group of gorillas for 10 years and who understood them so perfectly that she could mm -hmm. actually introduce me and the cameraman, as it were, to a friend, and the gorillas could then treat us in that way. Now, it's Diane Fossey's credit, that, not mine. It's all who you know in show business. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but those very individual gorillas were the ones that she befriended. Yes, she yes, had she, she knew that and, family. Yeah. So uh, the average person should not, the way people foolishly do at Yellowstone Park with the bears, try no. to uh, cuddle up. They wouldn't get a chance. They wouldn't get a chance. The, the, because you have to behave just as there are courteous ways of behaving in human society, there are courteous ways of behaving in gorilla society. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to behave in certain ways. And if they think that you're ill-behaved and don't know the form, they push off. Do they grin? Yeah, not so much. They, have, uh -huh. they don't have as much muscular muscles in their face as we do. But they recognize whether you're being dominant or not. I mean, if you go to... It's very common amongst human societies that if you're being deferential, to keep your head down. I mean, the bow is the obvious example of that. But you yeah. actually do, being deferential, you keep your head down. And if you're being dominant, you keep your head up. Mm -hmm. And exactly the same with gorillas. And if you go to the gorilla and you actually don't understand about this and you stand ver uh, upright, he thinks you're challenging him and he will probably smash you. Because you're in a dominant position that he associates with Well, he with thinks you're, you're challenging him because he's weak. So you therefore approach mm -hmm. on your hands and knees and keeping your head down, just like an oriental monarch, you, you know, in the old 19th century. You approach the king of Siam on your hands and knees. Uh, gorillas look so, uh, uh, you, you tend to say human, although not many people look like gorillas, but. But that look, when you look into those black eyes that seem to go back for thousands of years, yes. um, is there any way of knowing what they're thinking in any sense of the phrase? Are no, they? I mean, I find it difficult to know what other people are thinking, <laughs> yeah. uh, let alone what gorillas think. No way to determine that. Yeah, but I mean, all you can know is, is the way they react. Uh, mm. You can only judge by what they do. Um, and you can judge quite a lot by that. I mean, uh, they, you, can tell when he's getting, you can tell when he was getting fed up. Why do these people go away with their cameras? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this time has certainly fled, Stratton Thank you for, uh, and Life on Earth will be seen here, and the, the book, which is not a duplicate of the television show, but is equally good, one uh, I may safely say, uh, is a delight, and so are you to have. Please come back sometime. There's much, much more we can talk about, obviously. You're very kind. See you next time. Thank Amen. you very much. Thank you.